agree with that? Uh, yeah, half an hour, 45 minutes might be a little better. Got well, two hours. No problem. That's fine. Yeah. I've got so uh, I've got practice tonight. Oh no, we can't take you away from that. <laughs> okay, let me just share this real quick, everyone. We are live here on Hamilton Radio Stream HR two. We're now HR one. Uh, we are live here. I have my co-host Rosie with me. I finally and made it. We're really excited to have our guest tonight, who's actually on video with us. Thank you so much, Greg. We really appreciate it more than anything, and your time tonight. We know you are a father, so that takes a lot of responsibility out of you. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Yes. So we are excited to have you. Mary Rose, do you want to get started with some of the questions that you had yes. recently? Because she has she wants to start with what he's doing. What are you doing? He's now? putting us live oh, okay. on <laughs> radio. So when you were younger, did you always want to be a musician or was there anything else that you wanted to do and you just fell in? Uh, so when actually you hit the you hit the nail on the head when I was younger, all I wanted to be was a musician. Um, okay. I had no desire to be a singer or a dancer or an actor or any of those other things that I fell into. Um, but I just loved the guitar and I and I wanted to be a rock star guitar player. Um, and you know, I, I remember seeing videos when I was two, three years old and, and playing with these guitars that were twice the size of me. Um, and, I, and, I, and my uh, parents eventually got me lessons when I was six. Um, so my guitar teacher was this uh, hippie who all she really did, what she really did for a living was kids parties. Um, and she had like hair down to the floor. And <laughs> she, um, yeah, she was really cool. Um, and so she started teaching me all these like kids songs that were in her normal repertoire. Um, this land is your land and old McDonald had a farm and okay, you know, all, so all, those, all those, yeah. you know, the kids songs, but learning those songs, naturally you have to sing, sing them as well. Um, so that's kind of how I just like kind of fell into singing was just, you know, because it came with the territory of learning how to play the guitar. Um, and because I was so passionate about it, I, you know, I practiced a lot and I picked it up really quick. And I think by the time I was like seven, you know, she was able to tell that I was pretty charismatic and I was always just a ham and loved attention. Um, so she asked me to start joining her for her kids parties. So we made a little group called Bright Eyes, okay. and um, that's actually where I first started performing. By the time I was like seven years old, doing kids parties with my guitar teacher, um, and you know, for me, I was I was working for you know goodie bags and candy, and you know, I was basically oh my God. <laughs> other kids parties that were the same age as me. So that was a good time. Um, and believe it or not, that's actually what led me into, um, you know, going pro at one point. Um, I was, my aunt was a seamstress and my dad is a big Elvis fan. So I learned a bunch of Elvis songs and my aunt had made me this like ridiculous Elvis costume with the uh, rhinestones and a cape and the whole thing. So that became part of our act where I would come out dressed up as like a mini seven-year-old Elvis with a guitar. That's adorable. <laughs> I love that. Um, and I would just, you know, rock and, and do the, the leg thing and the lip thing. Um, and a different aunt of mine filmed it and sent it into star search um and then they actually called me up and it was actually through that that i ended up going on star search um and from star search i ended up getting a, a talent agent a real you know i went to manhattan and i got signed and by the time i was nine years old i was already doing commercials and you know some off-broadway stuff and it kind of just snowballed from there. Um, As somebody that just wanted to play guitar and do like rock and roll type music, were you into the Broadway thing or were you just doing whatever you could get your hands on? <laughs> That's a great uh, way of saying it. That is a great question. 
I can't. No, I was never really into the Broadway thing, to tell you the truth. Um, I was always into songwriting. Um, I, I wrote my first song, I think, when I was like six or seven years old. Um, and, yeah, I was just naturally, you know, creative. And, and, and it, was, it was really all about the guitar. Um, but then once I kind of figured out that when I sing with the guitar that I would get more attention, um, that probably is what motivated me most to, to focus more on the singing and on the performing. Um, and I, and you know, I, you know, I've, I've heard the word ham used many times in my life, um, to describe me, but I, but it's, it's pretty accurate. I was always just a, a little ham and I just loved the attention. And if I wiggled my hips and, and people would, you know, react to it, then I would do that again. Um, so it was a lot of the performance as well. That was a big part of you. It was just, yeah, just performing it was really a big part of it. Um, and then, yeah, I guess, you know, the Broadway kids was, was just another audition I had gone on. Um, and having got cast into that, that was probably one of the first um, more steady gigs. So that was, you know, rehearsals. And then we had shows every weekend. Um, but what was so cool about that was it was a group of like-minded kids who were also singers and performers that I got to really connect with um, and become very close with uh, from, you know, I started Broadway Kids when I was 11. So I mean, I met I met Chris and Broadway Kids and yeah, and, yeah. And that's what yeah. That. He, told us. <clears throat> um, um, he was really close with you as well. We know that. Yeah, that's what he, he told us when throughout uh, the whole we were interview. talking to him. <laughs> he said that he kept in touch with you guys, but you're one of the sweetest people he's ever known, and he was happy to call you a friend. Yes, that was really nice. So it was very beautiful. But, um, after you were done Broadway Kids, how did you end up? auditioning or maybe you didn't audition maybe you just put in dream street so um the producer who came up with the idea for dream street lived in the same building as chris oh, oh okay okay and there was another kid who also lived in that building named jordan and Chris and Jordan were these two Broadway kids and they were running around the hallways, singing in the elevators. And Brian, who lived in the same building, saw these two little kids running around and singing and he knew that they were involved in Broadway. I think they may have even been like writing their own Broadway play or whatever they were doing. Yeah, um, and it gave him the idea of, hey, this is, there might be something something there, you know, and, and he came up with the concept of creating a Broadway show where you had these five young kids and they were, you know, making a band and they wanted to get signed and get on the radio. Um, and originally Dream Street was supposed to be a Broadway show. Um, it wasn't really supposed to be a boy band. It was supposed to be, there was a script and there was a, a, a little model set. Um, and so he came up with this idea that was honestly probably inspired by Chris and, and Jordan. Um, he spoke to them about it. That's when he found out Chris was in the Broadway Kids. He invited him down to the show. He came to go see Chris and the Broadway Kids. I just so happened to be in the cast that day um, when Brian came. That's when he saw me on stage. and he was Okay, and, well, okay. Uh, meant to be. And so he was like, yeah, I would like that guy to audition too. Um, so they put on these auditions. And honestly, when we when I first auditioned, it was for a Broadway show. It wasn't for being in a boy band. Um, and they cast me, Chris, and Jordan, and a guy named Billy, and a guy named Jonathan. And there were the five of us. And we worked all summer long. We were called Boy Wonder. Um, and then at the end of the summer, we did a big showcase for all these record labels. Um, and I think they got a lot of the same feedback, which was that they liked Chris and I, um, but wanted to recast the group. So at that point, they did um, new auditions. For the footage, they pretended like Chris and I were auditioning again, even though we had already been in this project for like, you know, almost a year. 
and um, and that's when they cast Frankie and Matt and Jesse. Yeah. Um, okay. I was gonna Chris say and I kind of felt like uh, alumni almost yeah. Um, yeah. in the group. Yeah. And then uh, they changed the name to Dream Street because Dream uh, Broadway is known as the Street of Dreams, so that's where the name comes from. Okay. And and it, you know, it still was a Broadway show uh, originally. There was a, there, I remember the little model set that we had on the stage, and and they had created a script, um, and they pitched it to all these different record labels. And this was actually around the time that reality TV was. Uh, becoming a thing. I think like Jersey Shore probably was like the biggest thing that was out. Um, and their their concept was to have a quote unquote reality Broadway show where you'd have these five kids. It'd be the same storyline every show of us trying to make it and get signed and get our song on the radio. And then the reality portion of it would be when you're driving home from watching this storyline and watching this show and you turn the radio on, boom, the song would actually be on the radio, right? Uh, so okay. Really the, the not, not really reality, but the take on it. Um, and then uh, we got picked up by radio Disney and uh, getting the song on the radio panned out. And once, once that hit and the popularity kind of just kind of skyrocketed pretty quickly the whole broadway show concept wasn't really able to keep up with the demand for the regular boy band um, yeah. mm -hmm. and so we ended up just becoming a boy band um when really we were the cast of a broadway show originally That's crazy. I yeah i had i had no idea that. it was supposed to be a broadway <laughs> show i i can't see how that would work either but because you guys were so being. cohesive and it's crazy worked really well together as like an actual group as a band but i mean that was creative what would be well your roles would be on reality tv is what you said that was supposed to be what the broadway was correct well we have a character that we play um you know they were doing their best to tailor each character to our actual personalities so i was more of the the troublemaker bad boy <laughs> guy and you know, Jesse was at, uh, he was a couple of years younger than us, but when you're, when you're, you know, 13 to 15, those two years is a big difference, you know? So he was like the little brother of the group and, um, you know, and Frankie was the Italian guy from the Bronx, you know, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, actually who we were, you know, um, maybe dramatized versions if the script ever, ever made it. Um, but yeah, it was just supposed to be a, like a humorous show of, of these, you know, kids putting together a band and doing everything they can to try to make it in the industry. Um, and I think another thing that was important to them at the time, uh, Backstreet Boys was like the number one, um, and then eventually in sync. Um, but those guys were in their like twenties, I think. You know, they were they were older, um, and their fans and the girls who were going to their shows were our age. We were we were 12, 13, 14, You know, and and they were like, why why are these girls you know swooning over these like grown men? They should have a band of boys who are their age. Um, so that was part of the you know the whole catch. Um, and we were, I mean, we were all the same age. I mean, we've, we've all grown up together at this point. Um, so, you know, it, it definitely was taken off and it was taken off quickly mm -hmm. um, to the point where like we couldn't really keep up with it. And I think that's also part of what broke it up was just that it was all happening so fast. And, and I don't know if our parents were really ready to let us yeah. go. Correct. And but you, we know that story. And you had girls that. like going insane. So I'm sure there was probably okay, but the song people throwing Come themselves on. at I mean, you a little bit. It's to the song. I don't know how parents deal with that. We had very, um, very talented songwriters, um, you know, who were writing our music. Um, 
specifically Cosgrove and Clark was the team, the songwriting team who wrote um, the majority of our music. And they were actually there in the studio with us. They're the ones who did all our vocal training and our harmonizing. And they worked really hard at getting us to sound the way we did. Um, it happens every time was actually written by the same guy who wrote baby hit me one more time. Uh, Britney Spears, song. um, a guy out, I think it was like a Swedish guy. You know, so they, these were real professional songwriters. Um, Cosgrove and Clark, I think their big hit was a Jewel song. Um, was it Jewel? I don't know. I, I, it's been a while. But, you know, they had hit songs as well. So these, these, you know, they were connecting us with pros for sure. So as somebody that liked to write your own music, were you allowed to contribute any kind of ideas or was it all just written for you guys? That's a yeah. fantastic question. For growing up at least, yeah. So I, towards the end of the group, I remember having written a couple songs that I was pitching to the producers. Like, hey, listen to the song I wrote. What, you know, what do you guys think about this? Um, and you know, I can't, I can't say what would have or should have happened, you know, because it was all, it was already towards the end and things were kind of breaking up. So, you know, it's possible that maybe as we grew and as we wrote more, that maybe we would have wrote more together. Maybe they would have put us, um, you know, working with the songwriters. So, you know, I can't really say, I don't know. Um, but it was absolutely something that was on my mind, something I was interested in doing and had even, you know, started to attempt to do. Um, so I would have loved to, yeah. But you weren't able to. But we did, no. I mean, we were, we, we were kids and we were, um, you know, we were hired. You know, we were getting paid to, to work. Um, so we were in no way, even though we were the face of the company, in no way were we running the company or, you know, really had anything to do with anything behind the scenes. It was just, you know, have fun and do what we love doing and show up and smile and be charismatic and learn our dances and learn our our harmonies and, and all of that. But when it came to, like, picking what music we were going to do or, um, you know, what label we were going to get signed to or, or anything like that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they were cool. They, they would let us like have say in, in picking out what pictures that we liked, you know, they let us pick out the clothes we wanted to wear. Yeah. Well, you yeah. knew that. You yeah. watched the behind the scenes. They can make. We own yeah. So like we did have our own, like we were able to be ourselves. You know, I, I genuinely Absolutely. thought it was really cool having bright orange, parachute pants and a silver, <laughs> silver shirt that that was me i will i will admit um it happens every time is that what he's talking about uh he was definitely wearing uh orange pants i think you're talking about it happens every time, every time right music yeah. video yeah okay <laughs> that, that was, it was like a flashback when you said that <laughs> yeah I, I can't blame anyone for that other than myself so <laughs> Pulled it off, and I think back then that style worked. Now it probably wouldn't, but you guys had good clothes. The color wouldn't work right now. <laughs> I mean, orange, orange was always my favorite color, but you know, more to look at, maybe not so much to wear. But you know, yeah, <laughs> and I mean, when I was watching you guys, it wasn't really about what you were wearing. It was about oh, these really cute boys singing these songs. <laughs> Honestly, I think for us, it was more the um, what's it called? Those like little strings that would that were hanging out of those parachute pants. I don't know if you remember, but when yeah. we were doing our dances, the strings would like, like flip Wait. around. Yeah. Or like it just made it, you know, it felt like you were wearing a cape, you know, like we were just little superheroes. Like that, that's that really is so cool. adorable stuff that I really feel like I want to watch the music video just to watch <laughs> yeah. that. Now. We have your, <laughs> like, that. we have your Dream Street Live concert. Yes. And we watch it. We watch it a lot because that was the last big, like, film thing you did. You guys were all noticeably older and, and you had your, all your one songs, you know. So yeah. We wanted to yeah. Say it and everything. But I wanted to ask, as somebody that didn't want to dance, didn't want to act, how was it for you to learn all of these? choreographed dances to have to perform in the music video and perform every time you guys did a concert or a show. Yeah. In general. Not that I didn't want to, right. It just wasn't my idea. 
right? So like, I it wasn't something that I grew up being like, I want to be a dancer. Um, you know, Chris had that natural passion for dancing. He was a trained dancer since he was like, when I started playing guitar at six, Chris was, you know, learning to dance. Um, but I absolutely grew to love it. Um, and I picked it up and, you know, it would take all four of us a thousand more times and of practice than it would Chris. Um, but after you drilled it and you drilled it and you drilled it and it got to the point where you didn't have to like think about every move that was coming up next and you got to actually have fun with it. And it was kind of like, you just knew what to do. I loved it. I mean, it was, it was a lot more work, but um, the work was totally worth it because when we were on stage and the music was blaring and girls were screaming and we're doing a lot of little moves and doing, I mean, it was like a rush, like you couldn't believe. So, um, so I absolutely loved uh, dancing. I mean, even to this day, uh, I mean, obviously COVID kind of messed things up, but um, you know, my wife and I were, were taking dance classes together and, oh. and um, what, what style? Yeah. What kind of dance? All the like, styles, you know, we, you know, just for fun. <laughs> But I mean, even still to this, I love I love to dance. I I don't consider myself a dancer, but um, you know, I can I can get by. I can maybe make you think that I am. Yeah, well, you were really great. I mean, you and Chris stood out to me as the ones that like had the best rhythm. But you were all pretty cohesive. You couldn't tell anybody was slow with that. No, and I was gonna say, I'm sure that you guys all helped each other out too. Oh, like yeah. if you were, you know, some dances or some moves that you couldn't get down, Chris helped you, or vice versa. I mean, so our our choreographer Claudia was truly a whiz. Um, she took. Yes, she was in the behind the scenes one time. Yeah, she took four four kids with two left feet and and made us dancers. Um, but in all honesty, it was it wasn't just her. It was her and Chris. They were like the team that when it came time for us to learn, it was the two of them up front and then two of us behind one, two of us behind the other, and just watching them and and you know and learning yeah Craig, do you remember any of the moves for any of the dances i do like do you do you teach your wife do you teach your kids like uh i don't know i don't i don't hold dream street choreography classes <laughs> okay. um, but no, we build I mean, like, so many of those moves that i will die with them ingrained in my in my brain not like every move but like uh, probably a, a large amount, yes. Like, like the the spinning no, one, especially that it happens every time. You can never forget that. Yeah, that, I mean, that's easy. Oh, yeah. That's easy. <laughs> but one of the first songs that one of the, our first songs that we learned and choreographed was actually "Let's Get Funky Tonight," um, and we rehearsed that song more times than you could imagine. Um, so, like, I could probably do that whole dance, almost that whole dance. That one is fast. And when I got a little older, I was like, oh, this one's in Uendo City. That that makes like a young girl getting older happy hearing things like that. <laughs> there were a lot of things like, you know, looking back, it's like, huh, what, what does that like? Uh, yeah, listening to the lyrics for a lot of the songs, it's like, what does this mean? Uh, is but I, I don't want to ruin it for No, the only one I would say was like mature, mature for you guys was Let's Get Funky Tonight, because that, that totally sounds like something. I mean, what? What happens every time? Oh, that, I thought that yeah. was you hear a silly. Somebody message. tell me, because I, I mean, I didn't write the song, so I, I don't know. I could tell, you know. <laughs> no, see, a lot of people, I guess. A lot of people have said that one's about what happens when a guy gets happy, but in the song, you yeah. say, "I hear a silly love song in my heart," so that's what I thought happened every time. Yeah, in my entire right. life. You're probably right. Or sugar rush. I'm I mean, go we'll just, you go through them, and oh, there's just that one's sweet. things in between. I mean, it's just things in between the songs. But I had something I always but. wanted to ask you. When I would watch you guys perform, I noticed that you always did this thing with your shirt. I remember I mentioned this to you last time. <laughs> Didn't I say she was going to mention it? I was like, it's only going to take a few seconds into this before Greg does that thing where he shows a shoulder <laughs> and everybody screams. And I want to know if you started that or if it's just something that randomly happened and then you went with it. And like always wore shirts. You know, like it just it goes right back to 
what I was mentioning earlier about if I did something and it got me attention, I would just do it again. You know, that, that definitely was me. Um, that is not something that I think the producers legally could request of me to do. Um, <laughs> but yes, I, that became a part of my shtick. Um, and that, be, you know, was, you know, pretty clear and well known. Um, so yes, there actually was eventually after I kind of established that on my own as being a thing um, for Feel the Rain, they actually went and made me my own Dream Street uh, button down shirt for that song. And it was choreographed into that dance where if, I'm trying to remember my part, but whatever it was, I came, I come out and it was actually choreographed, rah, 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 you know, it was like, you know, the move. Um, and then I like would, would sling the shirt around and make everybody scream and, and you know, somebody, somebody had to do that in the band. I mean, the whole band did, of course. So did but... you pick out button down shirts or did they just say, okay, we're going to give you all button down shirts? Well, so once that became part of that, the choreography to that song, then they had to order boxes and boxes of them. And every show I would, you know, I would have to go put that shirt on right before and then throw it out there. Um, but I was like super into like the tank tops, I, like for whatever reason, yeah. I just like yeah. loved them. And um, so it worked with what I was, you know, what I was doing. So. You know, no explanation. I couldn't tell you. You know, I loved it though. It made me. It made me really like. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just really exciting because I'm obviously not really a late bloomer. I was born in 1997, so my sister got more of the option to get uh, to know you guys yeah. than I did. But then I, you know, grew up with I music and everything. So her, yeah. But I definitely want to. Um, bring back a little bit of the conversation because we know that you're a solo artist and sometimes you do write music or are you, you're still writing music, correct? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually, um, I'm writing with a, a, a good friend of mine uh, and we, we meet every week. We write uh, sometimes two, three songs a night. Um, we have probably over a hundred songs in our, in our uh, catalog. Um, uh it's mostly more for publishing these days and, and shopping it to other artists. Um, and, and maybe somebody wants to pick it up and like and tour the music. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. It's been a really cool experience. Um, we release you for yourself as well. Yeah. Would you still want to? Yeah. That's, yeah. I was confused that, when you said that. That's a very good question. Um, so, I've, I've done a lot of different genres and styles of music throughout the years, um, just because you grow up and you change as a person. So naturally you also change as an artist, right? Um, my wife might come walking in. I'm pretty sure she doesn't know I'm in an interview, but it's okay. Oh, that's fine. No problem. Uh, yes. <laughs> what, what was I saying? Um, so yes, it, it was obviously pop music, pop rock music. You know, there's a one point where I was on borderline like heavy metal. Um, oh my God, I want to hear it. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had our dance pop music. Um, and then my wife and like three or four of my best friends are all these like huge country fans. Um, yep. Yeah, I never was, but they kind of just like, yeah, hi. I got an interview thing. Welcome, say hi. Hi, Greg's wife. I forget her name. <laughs> she's, she's a little. She's she's kind of shy. So it's okay. It's okay. We hi. say hi. You're beautiful. I've seen right, pictures. <laughs> <laughs> she's whispering <laughs> from the. No, side. it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so yes, the styles have changed, um, but as I got older and, and all this country music kept getting played around me, I started to appreciate it more. And as a songwriter, it's hard not to because there's really some incredible storytelling that you'll hear in country music. Um, and so it did become a goal of mine that, um, you know, I was, oh, I was like, when I get into my 30s, I'm going to do a country pop album for my wife. 
Okay, um, but I'm excited for this. So, so yeah, so that, that became a thing. Um, and then this guy randomly hit me up on, I think it was like, band, I don't know, some, some music. I was going to say band camp, but it's not band camp. It's like, whatever. Hey man, uh, you know, are you interested? I'm looking for somebody to co-write pop country rock music. Are you interested? And he just like said the right words. Um, and it's like what I had in mind. And I was like, huh, interesting. Actually, yeah, let's give it a shot. Went to go meet this dude. We ended up writing like a song in our first session. Um, and then we just never stopped. We've been doing it weekly ever since. Um, we, we actually did record a six song EP that we released uh, under the name City Country. Uh, so you can actually listen to it if you go on Spotify and, um, okay. and that, that's, you know, my stuff. Um, but since we have written so much music and a lot of it does vary in terms of the styles, um, we recently decided that I would take some of that material, especially the ones that kind of fit in the Greg Raposo solo artist genre, um, and yeah, I'm going to actually be working on creating a, it would be a third solo album that might come out. Um, would, it still be, would it be under yourself or would it be under um, Country Street? Country Street. Uh, it's City Country is the, is the side project, but it's not a band. Like, you know, like kind of like I mentioned earlier, it's more for publishing. It would be more our intentions um, with that material. Um, we might actually do both. We're, we're probably going to come out with another city country EP and also a Greg Pozo EP coming. We to definitely this. would love to play the music here oh, on yeah. Hamilton Radio. I would love to hear yeah. that. I remember yeah. when you released your first solo album, I was so excited to like see something from you again. <laughs> I jumped on it. It was so good. And I remember before that, um, a song of yours was featured in the movie Stuck in the Suburbs. And yes, you just when I heard that. it, I got super excited because I immediately recognized you and I was like, oh my God, he's on a movie soundtrack. He's still yeah. doing stuff. Was that yeah. exciting? I mean, um, when the, the group, the boy band, was starting to disintegrate, um, it was right around the time I had written a couple songs for the group. You know what? My Life. Do you remember the song, My Life? It's my yes. life, my life. Yeah, yeah. Right? I feel like that was one of the songs that I had written in mind for Dream Street and was like showing it to the producers. Um, and, you know, things were kind of on their way out. Um, and so I decided to go and record these songs that I had written at a studio um, just to demo it for fun. After I demoed those songs, one of the interns at the studio said to me, he's like, hey, man, so when you go to um, perform these songs, like how, like, do you have a band? Like, how are you performing these? Like, these are like rock songs. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting because I hadn't even thought about that. I was in Dream Street. I wasn't even thinking about anything. Like, I just wrote this music and I wanted to record it. And he kind of, like, put that, like, seed in my head. And I was like, huh, perform these songs. Interesting. And he was like, well, listen, man, like, me and my buddies, like, we're all musicians. Like, if you ever want to just, like, hang out and, like, this, this stuff's kind of cool, like, we could totally jam on it and, like, see how it goes. And I was like, all right, yeah, cool. Let's do that. Um, so, so these guys came over, and it was Vinny Raniolo. I don't know if you remember him or, or know of him. He's been in, like, every band I've ever had. Um, mm -hmm. And it was Simon, who I'm going to see tomorrow, who's coming to rehearsal for the, our gig this weekend. Um, and Phil, mention. who I still, you know, talk to and, and does our web design work. Um, and, and Nick. Who I haven't talked to in a while, but you know, we somewhat, you know, stay in touch. And um, you know, it just it 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 was just like this magical experience where these kids came over and we started rocking and we started doing music that I had written and it just like instant goosebumps, you know, the whole time. I mean, I grew up 
having garage bands. I was in a band when I was nine. I would, you know, my, I would do my school talent shows and we'd make bands. So like I always had that, which was very different than boy band singing, dancing. It was music with, with, you know, with instruments. Um, so once I had that um, experience, it was almost like no, no looking back. Um, and that all of a sudden just like took over my whole dream world. And at that point I was like ready to move on from dream street. If anything, I always thought, you know, because it wasn't really ever my dream to be in a boy band, um, that it was like the perfect stepping stone for me to, have my solo career and, and to actually do my own music that, that meant something to me and to, um, you know, play my guitar and, and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, I remember at that time thinking like, oh, this is perfect because I've gotten all these connections now. I've, I've created, you know, a fan base and I have, I have all this going for me, but we didn't make it to Backstreet Boys or in sync level where I'm going to be known as the guy from Dream Street for the rest of my life, even though maybe that, that might be the case, um, which I'm totally okay with. And um, We know you for a good reason, that's why. <laughs> well, I, I just remember at that time, just, you know, you're young, you're a teenager, you're invincible, the world's, you know, at, at your fingertips. And I was just so excited about doing my own music and, and creating my own album and, and being my own musician that, um, I, you know, it didn't, I wasn't so upset about the group breaking up. If anything, I was kind of just more excited about what I had up next. Yeah, so that actually worked out then? It did. I mean, technically, yes, it, it absolutely, you know, for, for who I am and who I've always wanted to be, you know, I got to experience that. I got to, you know, to ride around the country and even go to other countries with some of my best friends and playing music that I've written on napkins and on, you know, my bed stand and, uh, you know, just, um, you know, it, it is different. It's, it's like, it's like working for a business versus, you know, owning your own business. It's very, very different. I think the movie chose a really good song from your album too. Cause take me back home is still one of my favorites. It's so good. Thank you. My, um, our friend Abby has a question for you. She wants to know if, if he, I think, can you read yeah, it? Can, can you, you see, see it? That? Yes. And the answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. I knew. Yeah, it was so obvious. I mean, if you know his voice, then you can hear it. We clearly. know his voice, but I feel like when we got to see a little bit in his the performance, clues, the clues help. Correct. But the performance, when it zoomed into like the turtle, you could see his eyes. No, you cheated. I knew it. Uh, no, no, I mean, I'm, you know, we, we also, so my mom and Jesse's mom are still pretty tight. Um, okay. So we kind of had, you know, some. So you knew before. I had an idea. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, I, I was, you know, I've been singing with the kid for, you know, since I was probably 12 or 13. So, you know, you can sing a sentence and I'll know it's him. Well, I want to give you this chance um, to promote your event. I know you have one coming up Saturday. You said it's your gig? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So every birthday year. Since, or birthday show? Exactly. Since I think since I've been like, since I was 18, I started doing these birthday concerts um it's just in all honesty like if you could do anything for your birthday you know what would it be and like my answer would be be on a stage have all the, the guys i played in uh bands with come and hang out and you know and and anybody who wants to support us and just rock out and hang out and party that's like my perfect uh you know, we're in a pandemic Right, so so I've been doing it annually. Obviously, I'm I'm pretty busy these days uh, with the family and and all the businesses that I'm that I'm taking care of. Um, so I don't I don't perform as often as as I wish I could. But I did, you know, I have made it a point to try and keep the birthday show going. Um, last year, obviously, wasn't an option, um, but I did do a digital virtual. Uh, Zoom or maybe it was on, on Instagram. I don't remember, but you know we had a, a cool virtual thing that we did, um, 
And then this year where it's like somewhere in the middle where actually I was able to find a really cool underground venue um, and we're going to be on stage and we're going to yeah. have, uh, you know, a full band. Um, I actually got rehearsal tomorrow night, which is exciting. I mean, it's almost like the party. Um, okay. this is really good. Yes. And then I did a, um, a show just like this not too long ago. Maybe you heard about them, the Frickin' Frack Show. Frick um, Frack. Yeah. Really cool kids. We uh, we hit it off, and now they're like good buddies of mine. Um, and they volunteered to actually host the virtual side of the show. So I don't even think I've put that out there yet. Um, I think they're probably making the advertisements as we speak. But yeah, they'll, yeah. Sure. they'll be streaming the show. Um, and yeah, it's going to be like kind of somewhere in the middle of a live show. It's going to be a very small, uh, intimate crowd of, of my family and, and close friends. Um, everybody's got to be seated at separated tables. Um, you know, and it's an early show. Uh, it'll be from 7.30 to 9.30. Um, and since it's so early, my wife and I actually um, agreed to have my daughter Angelica come for like the first half. Oh, that's adorable. Um, I'm pretty really excited about that. It'll be her first yeah. like concert. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, that's probably one of the most exciting parts is just, you know, I, I've, I've handpicked songs that I know she likes, and uh, it's going to be cool. So definitely check it out this, this Saturday. It'll be streaming live on numerous platforms. So. I was going to say, you'll share it on your page too, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll share it. So if you follow okay. me, you'll see. Or Fair Crack will have it. Somebody will have it. <laughs> you just so type it in. I, how many kids do you have? Do you only have one or do you have more than one? I have three. Three? Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember. I, I remember. not know when that happened. I, I woke up one morning and there was like three of them. Uh, and it, it just feels like, you know, you go to sleep and you wake up and here they are. It, it really felt like. It was that quick. Um, okay, what age? Are they? Yeah, how old are they? So Angelica's five, and okay. Jackson will be three on May 11th. So okay. like the week after me, and then our baby Milo just turned one in February. So, okay, so you're such a good wow. dad. I love your TikToks that you put out. <laughs> Thank well, you. Angelica, is she the one that did the cinnamon challenge? I'm pretty sure. Yes. That was so adorable. Uh, Greg, give out your social media or um, where people can find you. I mean, it's just my name, Greg Raposo, or possibly <laughs> Greg Raposo Music. I probably I don't even really know. Um, <laughs> but if you if you type my name in, you'll find me. Um, I'm I'm out there. He's out there. But seriously, I definitely want to reach out to you when you have new music coming out. We can get it to play here on Hamilton Radio. Oh, yeah. And we can interview you while playing it as well. Yeah. We can like, yeah. you. Yeah. Like, here's the song. Uh, so, um, so you can check out City Country on Spotify and, and probably <laughs> other places too. Um, and then a part of the show that we'll be doing this Saturday um, after you know, I, I play my covers for Angelica, and, and she heads home. Is going to be uh, going through some of the new material that I plan to record for okay. um, for this new album. So okay. you'll get a sneak peek at at some of the you know new brand new stuff that I've never played anywhere before. Um, and and yeah, it's almost kind of like it's going to be super informal and and just chill i'm gonna have you know, lots of different members there uh, band members there so like we'll probably switch drummers and we'll switch guitar players and hey who wants to come play this next song um yeah it's, yeah it's just about having fun i mean in all honesty the guys don't even know the material we have a, a one two hour practice tomorrow night in the city i don't even know who's gonna come or not so, for, you know, the show might even be the first time even playing this music uh, as a band. So it's not going to be, you know, polished at all, but it surely will be a good time. And, yeah, it uh, sounds so exciting, uh, though. And I think people will just be happy to see you, honestly. Especially yeah, it, it, 
<laughs> then it kind of like, almost like a listening party. Um, yeah. Where I get to show, you know, my family and my friends and, and anybody who tunes in, you know, what we've been up to. I love that. And you're you're still in New York, correct? Queens, New York, baby. Yes, you're in New York. We're in New Jersey. We're right. in yeah. Come to New Jersey for the studio. Or, or, <laughs> right. or vice versa. Yeah, we can come to you. Incredible to me. Cool. Cool. But it's definitely amazing. Did you have anything else you wanted to close out the show with? Because he's going to get ready to do band practice. Well, and close out the show. So I, don't I wanna... wanted to know if you were ever going to show, like, well, obviously, Angelica would be first. Has she ever seen you in your Dream Street days, or has she like heard the music, or when she? Gets yeah, yeah. Um, so, a hundred percent. But believe it or not, Jackson, my almost three-year-old, he's the one who loves Dream Street. Oh man! I mean, to the point where it's like, no, we're not listening to Dream Street again, please. Anything but Dream Street. Um, and if you don't believe me, you brought up my TikTok. I had there's a couple TikToks of him, um, you know, rocking out to Dream Street and like crying when I won't play it again. Um, and it's really funny, but that is like genuinely like his passion, like he loves it. What if he wants you to slowly and surely get him Dream Street merch? Do you still have that? I don't know. You can I, give to him. <laughs> I actually know it's funny you brought that up because uh, somebody asked me recently if I could send them Dream Street merch. Um, and so I went to see what I have and like dug through boxes in the attic. Um, and I really don't have much at all. Um, my, I, I wouldn't be surprised if my mom has like a bunch of stuff hidden away, but like me personally, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't really have much. Um, I found like a full set of the old Dream Street magazines. Oh, um, I wanted one of those. I missed it. Yeah, and I had a double of one. So I ended up sending that that copy, the second copy I had a person out in the Philippines. Um, oh. but that, that was all I have, so I literally couldn't do it again. Uh, <laughs> Don't make him do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. That's amazing. But if your son is obsessed with Dream Street, I was like, maybe he's going to ask for like a shirt or something with you on it. That's adorable. I, yeah, I have to probably just make one because I, I don't even have any of the original stuff anymore. I mean, maybe my mom does. I'd have to, you know, go probably go through her storage or something. But oh, I feel like Jackson's going to be a pretty good, a pretty probably big flirt when he gets older, just like his father. When you know, he's <laughs> showing a lot of interest in the guitar and in strumming and singing and rocking out. Um, you know, my mom is always saying like, that's exactly, that's what you were like. That's exactly what you were like. So well, I mean, he's, he's not even three yet. Um, yeah. so it's up to him to, if he, if he wants to do it. First but, when he gets older. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always down to support whatever, whatever they want to do. So we'll thank see. you so much for being here tonight. We really yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's a pleasure. It's just exciting getting to know you better talking to you versus what's going on right now in the world, even though it is video chat. Yeah. Um, but it's a safer way for all of us and, you know, for you and your family as well. Um, yeah. Can I just say, if an eight-year-old knew, knew that one day she'd be talking to one of her biggest crushes, she probably would have left. <laughs> 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 I'm so happy so, right now. But um, real quick, Greg, I want to know if I can get a radio promo tag from you. Of course. Okay, so you're going to say your name. Uh, you can say you were in the band Dream Street. You're going to say you're listening to the DJ Danny show. Cool. And then the second one would be you're listening to Hamilton Radio. Cool. Ready? Hey, this is Greg Raposo from Dream Street, and you're listening to the DJ Danny Show. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Take two. <laughs> hey, this is Greg Raposo from Dream Street, and you're listening to Hamilton Radio. That was amazing. Thank One you. you Boom. Real quick, my parents are here. Do you guys want to meet him real quick before we go? Hi, yes, okay. Hi. Hello. We're switching spots. Hi, we're over here. Hi. We don't switch seats. We're here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Hi. How are you doing? Very good. We're enjoying your uh, talk here and uh, really enjoying what you're saying. So. Yeah. Mom hey, bought me so much. Right.
up back in the day. She, was very she nice. purchased all of it. Jersey. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, how are things out there in Jersey? Oh, how's Jersey? Uh, not our, really our, great. Our governor's not my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> horrible governor. Uh, at, least, at least the weather's warming up for all of us now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Stay positive. Definitely. And hopefully life will get better. Yeah, that's all. Absolutely. Thanks, I, have, I have no doubt about it. Thank you so much, Greg. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you guys again soon. You will. We'll I definitely stay that. in touch with you. Okay, relax. I'm just saying, this has definitely made my life. I can't <laughs> okay. help it. I'm just so happy right now. Thank you so much, well, Greg. Have good we're, we're, we're friends now. <laughs> Thank you. We will stay in touch. Have a good rest of your um, your <laughs> writing. No, he's writing with his friend. You're writing with your show. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be uh, going through my set list and practicing all the songs for this weekend. So, um, okay. that awesome. Well, that's still really exciting. I'm excited to tune in or share it. If I can't tune in, so cool. I'll talk to you guys. You. I just want to say you're really handsome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mary Rose, he's a father. Let him. I'm just okay. All right. So Thank you so much, Greg. Have a great one. Have a good night, guys.